Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at this homemade 2 meter antenna. This is a Slim Jim style antenna made primarily out of half inch copper water pipe. Now I'm going to put this up in the rafters of my garage for some 2 meter work that I want to do here over the winter. Now first off I'll mention that I already have a couple of 2 meter antennas. I've got one outside that I use primarily for my shack radio here to talk on the local repeaters and do some simplex work. And then I have a second one already mounted in the rafters of my garage. That one is a homemade J-pole also made out of copper water pipe. And that one I use on the 2 meter radio that I have in my garage which I use to monitor the repeaters and talk to a couple of the local guys on simplex. Now this one I want to put in the rafters and I'm going to run some coax down here to the shack. I want to do a little bit of APRS work, maybe some packet work, or just use it as a secondary antenna to monitor some simplex frequencies while my primary radio over here scans the repeaters. Before we get started mounting the antenna up in the rafters, let's take a look at it and I'll show you how it's made. So I didn't make this antenna, a friend of mine actually did, although the copper water pipe was some uh, water pipe I had left over from another project. So he took the pipe and he cut it and soldered it into the dimensions you see here and used it on his roof until he moved into an apartment that didn't allow external antennas. So when he moved he gave the antenna back to me and it's been in storage now for a couple of years. So like I said before this is a Slim Jim style antenna. I'll leave a link down in the description below to a few websites where you can see some more detail about this antenna and its construction. But basically what we've got is on this side we have the radiating element and you can see that's unbroken all the way up to the top. And then over here on this side is sort of the, the matching stub just like on a J-pole. And I'm not sure how clear it is in the camera but there is a gap here between the matching stub and this part of the radi radiating element that's kind of folded over and brought back down. And this is all soldered together with standard plumbing solder a couple of caps here just to keep stuff out of the pipes. And then you can also see that my friend added some wood blocks in the middle just to keep everything stiff and together and then held them on with some zip ties. So in order to prep this thing to be mounted up in my rafters I'm going to take this piece of PVC conduit that I have and I'm going to zip tie it here to the center of the antenna like that. Now this antenna is not going to be out in the elements or anything like that. It's just going to be hanging up in the rafters of my garage. So this doesn't need to be super sturdy or anything like that. It should hold with just zip ties. So as you can see, I've got the piece of PVC zip tied on here and it seems pretty sturdy. I think it'll hold it okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is prepare a piece of coax to be mounted on these hose clamps. And you can see there's remnants here of how my friend had his connected on here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these hose clamps approximately where they are since when he had this antenna he used my antenna analyzer to tune it and I know it was working well for him. Now my antenna analyzer is out on loan at the moment so I can't tune the antenna but I want to get it up in the garage and mounted today. I can always go back and tune it later once it's up. So I had gotten the coax prepped and ready to go on the antenna and then it occurred to me that maybe I should run it up into the attic before I mount it to the antenna because the access hole I have in the ceiling of my garage is kind of narrow and probably can't pass the PL259N through it. So I've put the stripped end up through the hole there. I'm going to climb up into the rafters and kind of pull it over the rest of the way to where I want to mount the antenna and then I'll bring the antenna up in the rafters and mount that next. Okay so we're up here above my garage and we've got the antenna mounted to one of the truss cross members here. You can see I've just used some plastic conduit clamps here so this thing is not all that steady up here but it's not going to experience any weather so it should be fine. I've also run the coax over and clamped it to the antenna there. You can kind of see that in the camera, hopefully. The lighting, of course, here isn't all that good. Now, when I get my antenna analyzer back, I'll put it on here and see if we need to move these clamps up or down or anything to tune the antenna. But for now, it should be good enough to do some testing. Hopefully, you can see the top half of the antenna goes up there and just about touches the roof. It's off by a couple of inches. I probably should have mounted it down a little bit lower so it was further away from the the top plywood, but I think it'll be okay for what I'm going to use it for. So the next thing I have to do is unravel the rest of that coax and run it down into the radio room. Now the radio room is located right here, sort of behind that wall, 
and down one story. And right about in the corner of this wall over here behind my workbench is an access hole that I can run all my coax through. So I just have to pull the bench away a few inches and route the coax down through and we'll be in the radio room. So let's see how the Slim Jim antenna up in the rafters compares to my Bozak which is outside on the side of my garage. As you can see the Bozak is mounted on a 10 foot mast on the side of my garage so it's about 18 or 20 feet from the ground to the base of the antenna. Okay so let's take a quick listen to what this repeater sounds like on the Bozak antenna first. That's the one that's connected. This repeater is about 30 miles northeast of me here in Paxton, Massachusetts. And you can see that it's not quite full scale. I think it's two bars short of full scale. Let's turn the volume up so you can hear it. Yes, it's uh, Sky One Recognition Day. Uh, I just went to the WX1BOX uh, website and there was a schedule for Friday, November 30th, between 7 and 7.30 p.m. So let's switch over to the Slim Jim and see how that repeater sounds. So here's the same repeater on the Slim Jim up in the garage rafters. I don't really see any difference in the signal strength, nor do I hear any difference. I'll let you go. 73 to now, see you down the log. I am Kilo, Charlie 1, Delta, Africa, Delta. Yes, you are, and I am JC1, GIV. Let's see if we can find some activity on another repeater and see what happens. So here's another repeater. This one is about 10 or maybe 15 miles southwest of me. And you should be able to see here it's not coming in nearly as strong as the one that was twice as far away to the northeast. So this again is on the Slim Jim. Let's listen for a minute and take a look at the signal and then I'll switch over to the Bozak and we'll see what it sounds like on that antenna. So I've switched over to the Bozak now. Let's see what this repeater sounds like on that antenna. Okay, so as you can see, this repeater is now full scale and full quieting on the Bozak antenna. So that's a significant difference between the Slim Jim up in the rafters. So let's try one more repeater. This one that I'm going to try is in West Haven, Connecticut. That is, I don't know, about 45 or 50 miles south southwest of here. And with the Bozak, I can usually key that one up. I don't know if I can get into it real well, but I can at least key it up. Uh, so let's try it with the Slim Jim and see if we can raise the repeater. This is testing. And as you may have seen, I had the radio on high power, which for this radio I think is 70 watts, and I wasn't able to key that repeater. Let's try it one more time. This is testing. No response from the repeater. Let's switch over to the Bozak and see if it'll key up. Okay, so I've got the Bozak connected. Let's see if we can key up this repeater now. This is testing. Okay, so as you probably saw and can see there, the repeater is coming in, but very weak. I was able to raise it. Not sure if anybody on the other end would be able to hear what I was saying, but at least we know we can key it up on the Bozak. So one other thing that I want to demonstrate is that the Slim Jim seems to be picking up a little bit more background noise and interference than the Bozak does, and that's sort of to be expected. Right now we've tuned back to the Paxton repeater, and I'm on the Bozak, and you may be able to tell that I've got the squelch about halfway up. If I turn it down a little bit, you can see the background noise comes in, I go about halfway up, and it clears it right up. Now let me show you what happens when I switch over to the Slim Jim. So we're back over on the Slim Jim now. I'm going to turn the volume up, and you can hear We've got some background noise. You can even see a bar or two light up on the display there. And if I crank the squelch all the way up, it doesn't even squelch it all the way out. So we're definitely getting some interference on the Slim Jim, probably from the LED lights or maybe the plasma TV or something like that in the house. And again, that's sort of to be expected given its location. But for what I'm going to use the antenna for, that really shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now, like I said a couple other times previously in the video, once I get my antenna analyzer back, 
I'll throw that on the Slim Jim and I'll get it dialed in right where it should be. Maybe that'll help things a little bit. But for now, I think we're going to leave it as it is. My plan for the antenna is to put an old radio up here and hook up my old TNC and get back on the air with uh, APRS or maybe even experiment a little bit with two meter packet. It's probably been about 10 or 15 years since I fooled with either one. There's some new software out there for APRS that I want to experiment with so thought it might be a good project as we head into winter. And I've also thought about using that antenna as a scanner antenna to test out and listen to some scanners that I have here that I normally have out in the garage and listen to when I'm working on stuff in the summer but again now that it's winter I've brought the scanner in and I may listen to it here in the shack a little bit. Anyway if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching!